Well, hello again. Um, you're looking down on beautiful Palm Springs International Airport. The work of uh, Greg at uh, GPB 500. And um, well, you ever you ever have one of those days where you just need to go out flying? You just need to do something to escape the everyday routine. And uh, what better way to escape it than in the mighty de Havilland DHC-2 Beaver from uh, Soulmate Simulations. I am not uh, plugging the product per se. Um, I'm just uh, telling you that it's one of the greatest little planes I've ever flown. But other than that, I'm not plugging it. Just look at this thing. Uh, we're in X-Plane 11. It's not really, strictly speaking, built for X-Plane 11, so I'm sure there are little quirks and things in it, but it's done up in glorious Alaska forestry, livery, edge, and, uh, God, listen to those sounds. Anyway, um, I needed to fly, and um, you know what? Let's, let's get out of the plane here. Let me just escape the confines of... Uh, airplane for just one second here because um, I'll tell you why I wanted to fly from Palm Springs. Well, the reason why I wanted to fly today is because I um, tried to install a cable set-top box for my Fios because, well, not because I really wanted to watch TV because I don't own a TV but because I wanted to be able to watch certain TV programs and things on uh, my portable devices. And the only way to do that is to add some TV service to my frickin' Fios. And um, they sent me a set-top box, and they sent me cryptic instructions, and the set-top box requires you to plug it into the cable jack in your wall. And of course, I don't have a cable jack in my wall because I've got frickin' Fios. Um, so it wants you to plug it into coax. There is no coax. There's coax on the end of my router. Uh, but it doesn't say plug it into the router. But I tried plugging into the router and that didn't work. And uh, then it uh, tried to automatically authenticate and it couldn't authenticate. And then I tried calling tech support. And of course, tech support is only there during bankers hours, like between 1040 Eight and 11.02 um, Guam Standard Time or some nonsense like that. And before you know it, I'm getting all head up like this. And what do I need to do? I need to just go someplace nice where the air is clean and the skies are blue and the aviation gas is free. And um, I have people I can share the experience with and good destinations to go to and all the rest of that. And so uh, here I am. We're going to do some just some pure frickin flying because I am tired of coax jacks and set top boxes and firmware updates and download pushes and <sighs> walrus gumboots and spinal crackers and I've got frickin hair up to my well anyway now as to why Palm Springs um, I was uh, at a diner today and a little Sinatra came on and uh, it uh, reminded me that he had a place here and that reminded me of some photos that a friend of mine who um, collects photos showed me, and one of them was from the great Slim Aarons, who was the society photographer. Let me just shut my windows. Fucking defender that stopped me from installing an update to the GTN, etc., etc. Uh, but anyway, Slim Aarons here was the sort of ultimate chronicler of the wealthy leisure class in, uh, well, all over the place, but uh, south of France and 
the Hamptons and Palm Springs. And this is sort of the iconic Palm Springs house. This is um, the Edgar Kaufman house here, the department store king from Pittsburgh, where I was born. Odd that he should have this photo. And these are two lovely ladies who uh, look like uh, they spend a whole hell of a lot of time doing this because they seem to be doing it very, very well. You notice they wouldn't even uh, uh, dine to uh, to sully the uh, swimming pool with their uh, their uh, coiffed and lacquered forms, but um, uh, they seem to be good at uh, sipping drinks poolside. And this is really the iconic photo by Slim Aaron's, but there are some other ones. And that got me thinking about things that make a great photograph because to tell you the truth as much as I like architecture and this is I love mid 50s uh, mid mid century architecture and as much as I love Kodachrome film and that's what this is and as much as I love the lights from around here and as you can see the light isn't that far off now that come to think of it I mean look at that that's pretty close I mean, look at this you know you, you get the same desert air feel for it here but um, I like these photographs. I don't like that. I find the subject matter loathsome and the people tiresome and um, everything else. But, you know, I thought of, I was thinking about what makes good photographs. And you've got, you know, you've got the lines here and the light. Um, but a uh, long time ago, I, uh, I heard the photographer Jay Mizell talk. And one of the things he talked about is that good photos need to contain light and line and a whole bunch of other things. But he had a characteristic that he um, identified and named and, and, and refers to as gesture. And I'd explain it, except I found a good video of him, a fairly recent video of him, explaining gestures. So let me just play that for you right now. That's Jay. And some photo district news. Gesture is hard for people to grab because if they look in a dictionary, the dictionary is wrong. Gesture is not this and it's not the high jumper. I mean it is the high jumper. It is this. It is all the actions you see in sport. But it's also the quality of a table leg the way a tree looks, the clouds, the, the way you stand. I mean, do you put all your weight on one leg or do you put weight on both legs? Years ago, Brando used to sit in a drugstore and make believe he was making phone calls on a payphone. What he's really doing is watching people on the street. He said, I want to find out how much spit a guy carries in his mouth when he talks. I want to find out when he listens, does he pull his head back? When he talks, does he pull his head forward? What does he do with his hand? And all of that was germane to him as an actor to understand what people are like. And it's even more important for us to be perceptive about the way people behave. And then to extrapolate it to the way objects behave. There's one picture I took of a guy selling slides in Rome. And I, I shot it because he was sitting in a certain way on a table like this. And then I realized behind him was a wall that was 500 years old in Rome. And that wall had gesture. And then I realized not only did the wall have gesture, but all the things he was selling had their own eccentricities and texture and characteristics and revelations. Uh, that's what I'm looking for, photo. specificity. It's not like you can say mountain and describe all the mountains. You have to talk about them. It's not like you can say water. Water has millions of different gestures. It can be placid, it can be reflective, it can be violent. There's all different qualities to everything we photograph. And in a book, uh, uh, I have a, a page and it says, please don't turn a page until you read this. And I said, we're going to have pictures of a dog, a cat, a bird, and a horse. Try and fix an image in your mind what you think they might be like. And the, air, the picture is totally different from anything you will think of. 
And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to reveal to you something that you didn't see about a dog, a bird, a cat, you know, all that. So that's Jay Mizell on Chester. And if you look at these photos, maybe that's what attracts me about them. Um, they have, I mean, they Hello have... Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's video. Hang on a second. We're sitting, actually. That's my colleague Torbinator there, uh, whose videos I highly recommend. But these things have gesture in abundance. Look at the, the thrust of this mountain and the perkiness of this little foothill. And the way this woman is walking as if she's on a runway or a tightrope. And that's just the way she walks. You know, I mean, the way the trees here lean in and this gawky one right there is just gesture in abundance and this obviously this has gesture but actually if you look at it carefully there's as much visual thrust on this right here and this right here as there is on her right there and so um you know, what I like about Palm Springs is that it has it. Look at the little perky nippolosity of the terminal and the, the slashing lines here. And so um, I guess we're taking off from a painting or a photograph. I don't know. But um, this is my first time in this particular tail dragger here. Um, in X-Plane 11 and they've been dicking around with the uh, ground friction and handling on it and so my concern here is that uh, well maybe it'll be all squirrely on the ground but we'll see uh, we're gonna fly from here to Los Angeles and I'd like to do it uh, visually most of the way um, I'm a little bit concerned that we're gonna run into some weather almost along the coast. So what we'll do is we'll plan the flight to LAX. And um, what we'll do is as we get closer, we'll break off and get a look. And I know the weather is much better to the south. And so if worse comes to worst, we'll uh, break off and fly to one of the 10 zillion airports um, in Orange County. So here we are in the uh, main office of this thing. Got three fuel tanks. Um, the center tank actually holds the least. And if you look at the fuel gauges here, you would think that this would be the center tank, but it is uh, not. It's front, rear, and middle, which of course doesn't correspond to center, but that's one of the eccentricities of the airplane. Uh, our temps are here. This is really important. Our, our carb heat is here. This. Right here, believe it or not, this is the oil dipstick, if you can believe that. And this is the wobble pump, and this is used to manually pressurize the, uh, the fuel lines. Uh, the primer for the, for the airplane is way the hell down here, because I gather that's where one of the fuel lines runs. And let's see what else we have that we need to know. Uh, Keto heat will turn on in a second. It's going to be pretty dry. Let's see. Nav light beacon is on. Landing lights are off. Radios are on. And uh, way up here is our throttle. Manifold pressure RPM. At least this is logical. The power controls are here and the power gauges are here. Um, we've got a sort of quasi six pack of instruments. Um, this is just an ADF, it's not an RMI, and that is our suction, and that is fine. And our trim control, sort of like a piper, for the elevator trim, stabilizer trim, is up there, but also, so is the rudder trim, and let's just see if I can make it move, yeah, there it is. Alright, there we go. And that's our OAT gauge right there. Uh, wet compass right there, obviously. And other than that, if you look at the back here, um, 
is a pretty full cockpit, uh, pretty full uh, cabin, forgive me. Uh, this is a short takeoff and landing aircraft, so uh, we're going to actually do an intersection. Uh, you know, we'll taxi out. I want to want to get some practice handling this airplane. Um, if you look at the yokes here, uh, it has got... I don't know whether this is a fixed yoke or what's called a throwover yoke. In other words, whether you can flip a, flip a lever here and then sling this over here and fly from this side. Uh, I don't see rudder pedals, so maybe not. But uh, anyway, it has a rudimentary autopilot, which I've yet to really use or figure out. But uh, it's an S Tech, uh, what, I think it's a 35, is it? I can't tell, but it's got altitude hold, it's got a it's got a beam seeker, and, and it's got well, it seems to have an approach and a back course, but I can't imagine uh, they work unbelievably well. Anyway. Uh, we'll uh, just make our way out to the runway now. I'm just going to do a quick uh, check here of the controls. Uh, I've got a yoke profile in, but it may not be exactly right. Uh, what I am going to do is just pop outside here and cheat, because really what I want to do is see if I've got full control travel with yeah, I seem to. All right, well, that's good. All right, so get rid of this, and uh, you know, let's do plug a route in here real quick. I'm gonna try and follow roads and so forth, but uh, give myself a little cheat sheet. We'll do. Um, Basically, follow the route of the river. Uh, the river. Uh, what is it? The river three arrival uh, into LAX, and that'll just route us in uh, through the Inland Empire down uh, the 15 freeway, basically. I think past San Bernardino and uh, skirting Riverside, and um, on uh, through. So we'll just plug in a procedure here, arrival, we'll do the, we're actually not going to be, we're going to be not really following this arrival. And if we're flying this in real life, we would actually do everything we could to avoid flying this arrival because this is big jets flying high, flying fast and pounding down this thing about a, a minute and a half separation apart. So we'd actually be avoiding it and just do that, but we're actually going to be going to Graham. We're not going to Hector, which is flying way out of the way. So uh, we'll uh, just load the arrival, and then we'll get rid of Hector. And look at that Dipso, which I'll bet you any amount of money is over the Betty Ford Clinic. Uh, Dipso is an old uh, Latin contraction of a Latin word, uh, Dipsomaniac, which means basically booze hound. All right, so we'll remove that, and now we've got a route that looks like this. So basically to the southwest and then west. Not very far. All right, so uh, having done that, uh, Initial heading is going to be yeah, about 280 we'll go to. And we're going on runway 13 right. Uh, and um, see how we get on. Now we'll uh, head on out. Let's just see how this thing handles. I'm just going to test the brakes here. Ooh, they're very sensitive. Okay. Um, 
luckily this airplane, even for a tail dragger, has reasonably good visibility, so it's not like a fighter plane with a very long nose, which means you're not going to be constantly taxiing like this and looking out the sides. But it is pretty sensitive. And it's a very powerful engine. This is a big uh, Pratt & Whitney Wasp Jr., I think, which is a big radial engine. You can see it, big and fat. All right, where are we going? We can basically take off from almost anywhere, but we'll, uh, we'll make our way um, out a little further back down the runway because I want to A, look at the windsock, and B, um, I want to get more ground handling practice on this plane. Let's just see when the ailerons start to monkey around with our... Okay, not yet. Luckily today, you see the windsock there, we've got light variable winds. Um, this airplane is not good in crosswinds. Uh, it's not good in real life, and it's not good at all. Uh, in X-Plane. Uh, the flag is really not good to use as a windsock. They're animated, but they're not, I don't think they're accurate. Alright, let's see, where are we? Okay, let's just, uh, hello. Uh, we'll depart from this intersection here. That's not a good thing. Sometimes track IR lets you down. And that's a really no good. All right. Well, nobody coming this way. I'll fix that in a second if I can. One second here. I'm not going to do any run-ups right now. Um, I'll lie and say I did them before, but we will uh, turn on our lights. We will turn on our keto heat. Uh, we will uh, be squawking VFR, and we are. And our altimeter should be set. Let's double check. Palm Springs INTL information echo. 2009. 20 Zulu weather. Wind calm. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 17. Dew point minus 22. There we go. All right. Now, the procedure on this plane, I'm just going to set takeoff flaps. I check my trim. Make it reasonably neutral. Um, to keep this plane stable, at least in the sim, uh, you have to uh, keep a little bit of back stick on it just to keep a little bit of weight uh, centered on the airplane. And um, so you have to wait a little longer for the, uh, for the tail to come up. Um, the other thing is you have to roll on the power very carefully. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a little bit of right rudder trim. Um, it's not that much. And then we'll just hold on tight. Fortunately, our takeoff roll is going to be very, very short. Um, I've got a lot of fuel, but um, a lot of power, not a lot of cargo. So uh, full rich, full fine. Shall we go? Uh, you see what I mean? All right, well, that has been a problem in X-Plane 11, and I think it's a problem with this plane even more so. I hope we'll be able to fly it, so let's just see. I'm going to 
slowly increase to not say that's just way too squirrely. So uh, this plane is going to have to be optimized for this new version because that is not the way airplanes fly. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, just switch airplanes. Uh, much as I'd, I'd like to uh, fly this, um, that obviously is not going to fly, so to speak. So we'll just pop out of here and pop on the brakes. And that's too bad, but what are you going to do? All right. We'll uh, edit the flight, and we'll fly our trusty Baron. And uh, the other thing we'll do is we'll pop into here, we'll change our profile to our Baron profile. Apologies in advance here. All right, we're back on the ground here. And let's just quickly, quickly, quickly set up our flight plan again. And this, we're equipped to really fly into, uh, into the crap if we have to. Um, so we'll do that. System test okay. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you for saying so. All right, flight plan. The nice thing about this is it's so damned easy. Okay, and back and load procedure, arrival. River three. Boom. Uh, Hector transition to Graham. That's fine. Load the arrival. Get rid of Hector. Get rid of Dipso. Done. And we'll throw in an approach. We'll uh, pretend we're going to be flying to 25 left. Load procedure approach. 25 left. Transition. River. Coming right in. Boom, 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 boom. Load approach. Bim, bam, boom. River Lovin' Crane. There we go. Okay. Now. We'll squawk. And we'll pretend we're IFR. And do that. And we'll fly a 10-5. So let's get in there. Boom. Boom. On pig needles. We're good. And what is it? 3009, which is set. And we'll just uh, futz with that, of course. Do 10 5 and hope we don't black out. And arm that. And flight director, we'll turn it on nav. We'll set a runway heading. Taxi lights, beacon nav, strobe off, bada bing, bada boom. All right, everything good there. Some, well, 
isn't that nice? None of my controls work. Crap. That works. Oh, the little eccentricities of X-Plane. Here we go. Virtual joystick. I know what's going on. Baron. Profile manager. Oh, this is turning into one of those days. And that's the problem. My, uh, my software for my yoke is frozen. Oh, goody. Let's try it again here, kids. Oh, if I have to start the plane again. Well, first of all, let me just, just store the flight plan here. Back, flight plan, menu, store, done. Done. So that way, if we start it up again, we can find it. But let's just see. All right, everything works good. All right, let's get going because boy, do I need to fly. Now I know. I wondered why my friend John Fly. Um, practically posts a YouTube video every day. He needs to fly. John Fly does. And I can dig it. I really can. Matter of fact, if I had the money and an airplane I would fly every damn day. Let me just fix one thing here. I think my view is out of whack. No, my view is not out of whack. All right, well, so be it. In Soviet Russia, airplane flies you. Uh, I have no idea what that means. All right. We are looking good today. My, my view is just a little bit cockeyed, as you can see right here. Should be about like that, but it's a little bit more like that. Oh well. I'm still learning how to sit and use Track IR and not whip my head around like some sort of uh, uh, a goofy spaniel or something, but, you know, goofy spaniels have their virtue. Uh, we'll do a little intersection departure instead of using the full length. We'll take off right at the beginning of the displaced threshold. And the other thing we'll check is it looks like my settings got screwy. Um, you notice little jaggy lines everywhere? I will, be, no, all right, anti-aliasing is on. All right, sorry, I'm a little bit paranoid here, but I, uh, uh, things are not always as I expect. All right, strobes on, transponder on, trim set, flaps set, only thing I'm going to turn on is pitot heat because, well, we're not unbelievably cold now, but we'll be getting cold where we're going, at least at altitude. Um, in the meantime, let's take the runway and get the hell out of Dodge. Okay, there's 13 right. I can read. Runway is 
identified. We're going to take off here, and I think what we'll do is we will make a turn to the left to get on our course, which is going to be, what, about 280, 280. Matter of fact, let's uh, get in heading mode instead of nav mode. And uh, we'll set our heading bug right now to uh, about 280. And uh, actually, you know what? Well, that'll get us halfway there. We're probably going to have to turn about another 30 degrees to come on course, but uh, that's good for a start. Uh, let's see, everything else looks kosher. Our lights are fine, our temps are fine, fuel flow is fine. Fuel quantity says empty, but it is not empty. It's, it's just um, screwy. Um, that's because the airplane isn't really updated for uh, Windows, uh, not Windows, for uh, X-Plane 11. Rudder trim is centered. And we should probably open up our cow flaps here, which are hard as hell to do. You know, you do and do and do for these things, and this is the thanks you get. On a real plane, these things are designed to be grabbable, so you just grab them. Um, everything is nice and big and human size, but anyway. Here we go. And let's see how the ground handling is on this. It should be considerably better than it is. Okay, there's 60. There's 80. And we'll uh, just rotate on off of here. Like so. Look for two indications, two gauges breathing a climb, and we got them. Up can come the gear. And even though we're not quite past the runway threshold, just bring the flaps up, we're fine. Pitch for 120, power to 25, props to 25 and evened out. And we'll start our turn. A nice standard rate turn. I'm following the lateral indication on the flight director, not the uh, vertical, because I haven't set a vertical speed on my uh, autopilot because it's a pain in the ass to pre-arm with the knob twiddling. So around we come, and spin around to an intercept course, right about there, intercept heading. Climbing at 120, we're climbing um, at 25 inches of manifold pressure. We're looking around. We're in a standard rate turn. Climbing at about 1,200 feet per minute, nice and comfortable. around and we will uh, get on course and I believe that course is going to take us pretty close to the side of that mountain if memory serves and so in that case we're just going to avoid um, coming on course until we clear that uh, foothill right over there that little little step anyway there's the airport As is so important in my dumbass flying, um, I am just now, am I realizing that they're going backwards in? Am I, have I done this again? Have I actually departed in the wrong direction? I've done it before. No, I haven't. It just is the two front indicator is behaving funny. Oh, all right. Let it 
to do as it wishes. Uh, we'll pop into nav mode. And we should be able to outclimb this hill here, but we won't uh, bet on it. Matter of fact, what I'm going to do, you see we lost an inch of manifold pressure on the climb, so I'm going to leak up my power a little bit. And I'm not getting really anal about our course because I know we're supposed to be flying through this valley along that highway, and so I more or less know where we're going. Okay, we're at 5,000 feet, halfway there. Um, in another few thousand feet, I'm going to turn on our oxygen, although I don't think it, it is simulated. And this is not a pressurized plane. That would be a tank full of oxygen that uh, that we uh, we would slap masks over our uh, faces to breathe. Come up over the California desert here. go over the beautiful ortho scenery there we go oh I know why I, my CDI is broken hang on I'll fix that no not that way this way. The new version of uh, the uh, thingamajig here has got a nice settings uh, window, which I will uh, move someplace a little bit more convenient. I need to connect to this. Will it work? Uh, if it won't... Sort of one hand the flying here too. It, it is driving the uh, flight director. It's not driving this and it should. Setting window is not coming up. All right, well, screw it. We'll follow roads and rivers. And we'll increase the power a little bit more. And we'll lean our engines a little bit. We're getting up there. Yeah, so this, uh, this HSI is going to be bogus the entire time, but our flight director will be accurate the entire time, so go figure. What I can do is this. Uh, let's uh, capture our rate of climb, turn on the autopilot. Oh, it levels us out. That's so unfortunate. Um, Not sure if that's correct behavior. Um, all right, let's see if it actually uh, follows a course. There's the freeway. Um, Big Bear is over here. Getting our coastal fog bank over there, this way. But let's do this. Uh, 
drop that in. And we'll uh, give ourselves something to uh, tune to. So we'll go uh, Palm Springs to Paradise. work so just uh, put in nav make sure my altitude is armed it is and on our yaw damper there we go okay so we'll tune in 112.2 here in. Paradise VOR identified. We will uh, pop into heading mode very briefly here. There we go. Alright, let it fly to a heading. And make sure at 10.5 we level off. The other thing we'll do is we'll put our oxygen on. And We'll um, flip over to the loc. There it is. And let's see if it works now. Come on. Oh, this is a pain in the ass right here. I'm trying to find out what radio we we're on and fly direct to Parrot. There we go. Okay, there we are. Okay, so we're on. Let's just tune it to. Come on. There we go. Tune it to that, and we'll let it uh, let it seek to that. We'll fly straight to Paradise, so to speak. And is it going to work? It should. It should turn us in one second. All right, so then we we'll go to Paradise, and let's see, where is Graham with respect to that VOR? Let's see if it turns us not. We'll fly it in heading mode the whole way. Uh, the other thing we will do is bring our props back to cruise. There we go. It's a little exuberant. The old triple the standard rate turn, but there we go. All right, so that will get us to Paradise, and we're 34 miles away. And uh, uh, Paradise is how far from LAX? Let's find out. LAX is now getting fully socked in. Well, that's no damn good. Uh, let's get ourselves an approach. We want 2-5 left. All right. Uh, let's see. Go to uh, these are all vectors. All right, we can go to uh, gate. And gate is on the 338 radial of Seal Beach, and Seal Beach is 1157. So let's tune that up. Okay, 1157 is tuned up and 338. All right, there we go. 338, so we're going to look for that to turn. 
and we're not picking it up yet. And we are now 28 from uh, Paradise and from Paradise. Let's see, are there any waypoints on here that are actually on our approach? Probably not. Tracking it, we are. All right, there, there be Seal Beach. And there is approximately the 338, right about there. And we can depart. Paradise on about uh, do it on the two five seven. That's fine. Let's get the letter trimmed out a little bit. And right now we're coming in on about the two four nine. So we'll turn slightly to about there. And then we'll track that outbound. And we'll track that outbound for ooh, a good let's see, 13, 29. It's a very congested chart here. About 20 miles and change before we should be hitting our initial fix. All right, that's good. Anyway, if you look out the right there, over that bunch of hills, you should see Big Bear Lake, but you can't because we're not that high. But uh, Big Bear is right about, that's uh, actually right about, yeah, I think it's nestled in there. Might see it from where we are, but it's right about in there. All right. Still have to adjust where I've got my sensor. Let's see. Is this March Air Force Base? I think it is. I think it is. south of the way we would have. All right, where is San Bredu? Should be right about... Right, well, the rule is that the airport you're looking for is always behind a pillar. And I think in this case, that would be true. Riverside is there. Oh, for God's sake. The sensor here on <clears throat> pardon me, this infrared sensor here is painful. And that's the 10 freeway right there. Far. We're 16 miles from the station, and uh, well, if you're a Pilot Edge fan, I uh, was in LA recently and I drove the Mini route, and uh, uh, you know I can't show you the picture, but I took 
I uh, drove uh, from uh, Zamperini Field here in Torrance up the Pacific Coast Highway, crossed LAX, midfield actually, drove to uh, Santa Monica, took a picture of the Santa Monica VOR right here, which is on the uh, west end of the runway, and then drove out to Burbank. I don't know why I did it, but I did it. All right, so here we go. And looks like we are picking up Seal Beach now, which stands to reason. It's reporting 41 miles from Seal Beach. Uh, Seal Beach is actually going to be out about there-ish. And, um, you know, you just get a little too close to the track IR sensor, and I, uh, not the sensor, the, the infrared beam there, and that's what happens. So, my apologies. Uh, that's one of the reasons why it's really... I don't have to move as much, but you see, it freezes, then it flips. It's okay going this way. It's okay looking all the way back here. I'm making you guys sick, I'm sorry. But when I try to get just a little too close to the sensor, the angles get funny like that. We can go in close like this, but no. anyway. I, uh, as you know, um, I blame society. All right, we're tracking solidly here, 11 miles away, at which point we'll leave on the 257, which will take us a little bit to the norther, and that's a new word, norther. Uh, we'll get a little bit more north, and that way uh, we will get closer to an intercept uh, of our localizer. Um, the eagle-eyed among you will notice that right here um, we're not really cruising as fast as we should and that's because the uh, drag model on this plane is not optimized for X.11. So and some of the sounds don't work but in, uh, in other respects it, uh, it does okay. As you can see, with the autopilot on, I cannot move the uh, yoke, and that's as it should be. Um, the other thing let's do, let's get our frequencies set up. Uh, yada, 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 yada. Two, five, left. And that's two, five, one. Ah, look at this. It's already in standby. Look at this. This is magnificent. And as you can see, we're a little to the south of our old track, but we'll fix that in a minute. And I hope the weather holds, but I make no promises. God, I'm pissed. I really wish we could have flown it in the, in the, in the beaver, but... Okay, there's, there's Riverside right down there. And there we are upside down. And the reason why this is called the, uh, oh, for fuck's sake, the, uh, the River 3 is this is the L.A. River. It actually looks like a river at some points, and other times it looks like we're upside down. Honestly, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm deeply sorry. Just trying to get this thing calibrated right, and I can't. Not now. So I'll sort of fly around with my head in a vice a little bit. Can you imagine in real life if you looked around and you leaned forward in the cockpit and all of a sudden your view flipped upside down? That would be disconcerting. Still running a little richer than I need to. Lean out a little bit. And we're now 
three point some miles away, so in a, in a second this thing's going to start to go goofy. So what I'm going to do is fly this heading first, get into heading mode here. Some autopilots will automatically, seamlessly flip into heading mode when they're on a nav mode and it starts to, uh, you start to get into the cone of confusion. I don't know if this does, so we're not going to risk it. Um, VORs operate on slant range. Um, notice it says we're 2.5 miles away and we're um, about two miles up. So uh, we're almost dead over the station right now. And you'll notice that the ground speed, see that with respect to the station? You see how the ground speed is slowing down? That's because our angular velocity over top of the station is diminishing to almost zero. And I'm just going to keep flying this heading even though our needle is starting to deviate. And that's because we're practically on top of the station in the cone of confusion. 50, look at that, look at that. Our ground speed's going down to almost zero. And when we go right over, when we get to zero, it means we're right on top of the station. And notice how this just moves away. Okay, zero, and now it's going to start climbing again. And notice how the to and from needle is a little wonky. So I'm going to spin us around to about there, and we'll pick up that radial. You know, we'll pick up a little bit more of a northerly radial. We'll pick up that one. And we'll lock it in. There we go. All right, so now here we are moving to the north. You notice how the river is now going to move to our left side. And in we come, and there's our marine layer out there, and that's what we're going to descend into. I think that's the 10 freeway, but don't hold me to it. Uh, the sky is X and Viro, by the way. And here we go, and we probably have about 20 miles to go. Let's just see where we are now with respect to Seal Beach. You see how that's getting closer? And when we're at about 10 miles, we should be where we want to be. We should cross this um, radial, and the localizer should be a little bit to our right, if I've done this correctly. Notice how our needle switched from, and notice how our uh, DME is counting up now. So we've got another about 15 miles to go, and since I don't want to slam dunk us, let's come down right now to about uh, 5,000 feet. And look, here comes our weather. We don't need anything drastic here. About 800 feet per minute will get us a three degree down slope. Now our ground speed is going to increase because our speed is increasing. So I'm going to roll off the power slightly right here. Save the engines a little bit. I don't want to roll off too much because I don't want to shock cool them. I'm like a moron, I've been flying around with my uh, with my cowl flaps open the whole time. It's like what I'm to fly undone. Unfortunately, they're a pain in the ass to shut, as you can see right there. I should be flying the plane here instead of flying the fucking cowl flaps.
All right. So there is the LA River. I think we're too far away to uh, pick up the localizer. moment. Let's see where we are. All right, there we are. Crane. There's river. That would be the beginning of the approach. We're still in March Air Force Base is airspace. And so let us uh, let us vector ourselves a little bit. So we'll get into heading mode here. Better yet, we'll uh, come about that far to the north. Up into heading mode. Round we come. to the IMC and caught a little updraft there too. And uh, let's just see. My god, we have a glide slope already. That can't be real. All right, two, five, one is our, come on, bastard. Right about there, and notice how we're on an intercept. And notice how we're now 14 away from Seal Beach. We'll be flying away from it slightly. There's our, uh, there's our uh, localizer right there. And here we come. Just set us up there. Turn off the track IR so we don't all barf. All right, there we go. Get into nav mode. Grab that loke. Tote that barge. Lift that bale. Spin that bug. Or you wind up in jail. No idea what that means. All right. So now our next uh, waypoint is we will be at our initial fix if we are on the localizer and we cross this radial, which is going to be coming from. Um, over there, we're coming from uh, 150, and we're going uh, this way, and 150 is this way, so right about there-ish, and we are cooking on down our, uh, cooking on down our approach path, as you can see right here, look at that, look at that, how do you like that? Second, we should uh, have uh, our crossing, which is a gate, I believe, and gate happens to be right there. So let's see how accurate our uh, our little uh, slant alpha navigation is. So again, we're going to look for gate here, but really we're going to see if we get it here. We're already on this. You can see right here and you can see right here. Just to even up the props for you a little bit so you don't go nuts. There we go. All right. And again, we are going damn fast. 
which is perfectly fine. No B in a ATC is going to mind. Here comes our glide slope already. And we should be pretty much dressed for success here. What I'll do, I'll uh, slow our descent. So we'll pick up the glide slope. See, we're below the glide slope. Okay, there's 11.7. There's gate. And we should see this needle start to move any moment. And we're obviously not configured for approach, but we'll get there. Coming up on 5. As soon as we get to 5, this is naturally going to slow us down. Because we'll level off. Here comes the glide slope. Here comes gate. It's 11.4. And you notice it's not changing very much because we're not going towards the station. We're going past the station. And here, look, 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 look. Here it comes. Look at that. Here comes gate. I don't know why I'm surprised. This is exactly what you're supposed to do. Here comes the glide slope. We're level now, and we're going to slow. And 11.2. As soon as this crosses, it should read just about 11. And there's our glide slope. Let's get on it. Look at that. All right, let's slow to gear extension speed. Down to about 15 inches. Got a little bit of a wind. There we go. Alright, we don't need this anymore. Retrim slightly. Don't really need that anymore. Alright. So now we are 15 miles out, so this is, we're fine at this speed. We can easily slow down. What I should really do is uh, tune up LAX, which is 113.6. Uh, okay. course. It was a pain in the ass. 13 and 6. Get that loaded up there and that way in case we need to use the Los Angeles um, VOR to get out of here. I'm right at gear extension speed or almost. And this is keeping us ever so slightly below the glide slope. That's interesting. All right. Ten miles out, I'll start to fly the plane. Just get dressed for success here. We are nice and set. We've got a wind from our left. Interesting. No ATIS. Thank you so much. All right. It only has ANUS, not ATIS, apparently. All right, 3023. That's important and very good to know. 3023. That is going to deeply affect our uh, altitude readings. <laughs> All right, there we go. I'm just going to bring our props forward. 
Good. And uh, shall we go flying? Let's see, we are in the muck. Why not? Alright. Now remember, I'm already pretty configured here. Eight miles away. Glide slope on the localizer. I'm uh, looking mainly at my flight director, cross checking it with the raw data, and checking my rate of descent. And I'm glancing at my power settings. I know where they are, um, and I know where they need to be. They're pretty much going to stay here the entire time because now dropping a notch of flaps, like we will right here will float us up a little bit, but that's okay. We'll just work around that for a second. We'll lose some speed, and we'll get around that also by lowering the gear. If I were really slick, I would have diddled the power a little bit as we did that. Okay, there we are. 5.7. The only thing I really have to do at this point is another notch of flaps, and it looks like I've got a little bit more energy than um, I should have at these settings, but again, that's a weird function, I think, of the uh, um, adaptation to X-Plane. Yeah, we're getting some bumpies, too. So we're on the glide slope, we're on the loke, coming down at about 500 feet per minute. Okay, we're four miles out, I'm just going to put in my final flaps here. And try and... I'm not going to get obsessive about this, but... It'd be nice to make the props sound good. at 100, that's good. A little bit low. Not low according to the flight director, low according to the raw data. There we are. Okay, 600. Let's look for the airport. And look at that, there we are on profile, on target. Let's win this one for the home team. A little bit of a uh, left to right. Airport. Just trimming back a little. A little right to left, I should say. And that was barely acceptable. Too busy sorting out my uh, crosswind to flare. All right, well, welcome to Los Angeles. And we'll uh, actually taxi off right. Now we can't right there. That's embarrassing. I'm going to say that's signature right over there. And there 
There is no clear way to get there. All those taxiways seem to be grassed over. All right. Something else to work on. I just installed the scenery, and I probably got the layering wrong. But um, anyway, that's the flight with a little bit of rough and ready um, slant alpha backup there. On the arrival, in reality, you'd be vectored like crazy, this being Los Angeles. And um, oh yeah, this is the new middle taxiway between the runways, so people, so airplanes don't uh, smack into each other. Uh, it used to be you'd have to vacate that runway and then immediately cross another runway out right there. And what they did was they moved them around a little bit, slapped this taxi we were on right in between them. And now, et voila, it is much safer. So here we go. We're, we've been told to, uh, to cross 25 right and expedite. We'll still look. So expedite we will. And we'll, uh, we'll bother the nice folks at Delta here. Will we? Ah, American Delta. Doesn't matter. Uh, they just swapped terminals here, too. So um, American was at. Four, it is now at six, and Delta was at six and now at four, or maybe it is vice versa. You see these textures, they're all screwy. Um, all right, you know what we'll do? Let's pull the hell up here. There you go. Jetway just for you and me. Brakes on, turn off the avionics. Boom, 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 and boom. And because I always burn my batteries here, boom, and keep the nav light on. So I can tell if I accidentally left these on. All right. Anyway, welcome and um, thanks for watching. And um, it was a very therapeutic flight. I hope it was good for you too. And um, from the world's uh, least appropriate parking space here, my God, the ground power unit's bigger than the plane. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.